Okay guys, it is time for a full length iron masterclass. If you are new to the channel, do not forget to hit that subscribe button, that like button, and please comment below on everything which has helped you within your iron game. We're down here at the range at the executive course, got the stations all set up. These are my, um, I was gonna say victims for the day. Uh, these are the golfers who I will be helping today. I've also got me and my golf over there as well doing driving. And then we've got Seb and Chris Ryan scattered around the complex. It's gonna be a really, really cool morning. Very excited to get these guys down on these stations and hopefully try and improve their iron play. This little drill here, now this is all about ball position, okay? Does anyone know why ball position is actually important? Bottom of the arc. You've been hanging too much around golf clubs. <laughs> so bottom of the arc, yeah. So with iron play and with, to be fair, with drivers as well, actually control, come in a bit closer guys. I promise not to bite, I promise. So bottom of the swing arc, super, super simple. You want to be hitting the ball first and then the turf. Yeah, thanks for coming. <laughs> That's, that's it, we're done. Um, so you wanna be hitting the turf. Now, ball position, that is one of the keys for this. But what does your ball position relate to otherwise in your body? So we know it's about swing arc, but where is the middle of your swing arc? So, sternum. It's just left of sternum, basically. So it's just about here, generally, for most people. Controlling this, controlling that, that gives you control of swing arc. So this isn't about kind of path and playing and all the rest of it. You know, these are different factors that do need to be worked on. Everyone here knows how golf is such an infuriating sport. You fix one thing and something else is gonna come apart, but this is the absolute key, okay? So with a four iron, hmm, chose an easy one to start with. Where does the ball position need to be here? Slightly in front, okay? Slightly in front of what? Middle, okay. Does anyone know how to get a decent ball position? Does anyone know how to accurately judge where your ball is in your stance? Because how many people, and this, this happens all the time, how many times do you get set up over the ball and you stood there, you're ready to go, but you're not sure where you're aiming? Does that, that happen quite a lot? Left eye, left eye, right eye, nose, forehead, yeah. nipples, stomach, hips. Somewhere, in relation. Somewhere you've got to get a guide. That's the only thing that matters. It doesn't, it doesn't matter because everyone's individual. As long as you have a guide to actually go around, base everything around that guide, then you can get a consistent ball position. That's absolutely key. The easiest way for me to do it is I'm going to just, well, aim kind of towards the center of the range here. But I've got this alignment stick down, this Colin Montgomery alignment stick available in all good Amazon stores worldwide. And if you get yourself started with your feet together, so your sternum is now directly in the middle of your stance, unless you've got anything kind of wonky going on, but I'm not a chiropractor, I ain't gonna be able to fix that. You're in this position here. Now, if I want this ball position forward of center, take a little step with my left, bigger step with my right, ball position is now in front of my sternum. Simple as that. If you start every single shot with your feet together, that gives you an accurate guide as far as where it needs to go, okay? Now with a longer iron, I don't actually think I've hit one of these before, so we'll see what this goes like. Ball position is forward of center. My sternum is now behind the ball. I want to be moving it pretty much onto the ball at the point of impact. So with an A time, with a wedge and all the rest of it, your actual shift forwards probably will not be as much as it will with the four. That's why a lot of people struggle with those longer irons, actually getting off the back foot and actually moving into the ball. Because when the ball's on the ground, it's super easy just to stay back here and try and lift it. That's why a lot of people struggle to take divots with long irons. People struggle to take a divots with long irons. That's a simple reason why. So it's getting that setup routine. Sternum position now is behind the ball. So I just need to make sure that as I come through, I'm shifting forwards onto the ball. Anyone recognize the name? 
Decent golfer, yeah? Won a few comps in his day. <laughs> Above average. Give him, a, give him a seven out of ten, you know. You'd like him to be in your scratch team. Sam Snead, how did he warm up to play? Is anyone there? How many people, when they go play, just before they go play, go to the range and actually warm up? Does anyone do that? Yeah. Okay. You're on the range, aiming at, say, just that target off to the left-hand side there. I've got a seven eye in here. I'm just going to have a swing. Okay. Struck that pretty solid. Ball is going to finish 10 yards off to the right-hand side. Okay. Now, who here would try and fix that fade, try and fix that flight? If, let's say, it's moving 20 yards left to right on the range. On the range. Right. Try. So, before you go play, just grab those um, balls there, sorry. I'd like to go out with the shag bag in a minute. Cheers, bud. So, just before you go play, it is too late. It's far too late. You're not going to be able to fix your swing on the range. You're going to go out, you're going to have, you know, between 40 to 60 swings, depending on kind of your skill range on the golf course, whatever it might be. You're going to be focusing there on the targets. You cannot start focusing there on technique. That technique work, that has to be done days before, you know, to try and groove that in, to grind that in. So what Sam Snead did, sounds deceptively simple, but it's wonderfully true. He used to hit 10 or, ball, 10 or more balls to a target, and let's say he was hitting those shots and they were finishing 10, 15 yards off to the right. Sam Snead used to pull it, so kind of think about it the other way. What did he do when he was out on the course? How wonderfully simple that is. Who gets on the course and is determined to aim correctly? <laughs> Everyone, right? Everyone wants to aim right. Everyone wants to swing well. Everyone wants to look nice and pretty. And obviously Snead did, but... The fact is that when you practice here and you're hitting shots out there, if you have a consistent pattern, the clue's in the name. You have a consistent pattern. Use it on the course. But this drill super simple with alignment stick, hitting shots at a target. So say it's that one, that one, whatever club you want. Try and see what your consistent pattern is. Then aim the alignment stick to the corresponding distance that side of the target, then hit some shots and actually see what happens. You'd be mighty surprised if you can put the same swing on it. It's often difficult to kind of change. Now, this thing, this little drill. Now, this is about low point. So we're talking about kind of ball position to control low point. This is a great way to actually practice it. Has anyone used this drill before? Now, on a day like today, this really just should be used for lying on and someone bringing you fresh cocktails every few minutes. That'd be fantastic. So, feedback drill. Super, super simple. If you hit the towel with the golf club on the way down, swing arcs bottoming out beforehand. Not a prayer mat then, just before we start. The Not a prayer mat, no. <laughs> Heading towards the East Course, right? <laughs> so, <laughs> this one is so, so simple. Ball position, obviously use this drill, ball, feet together, all the rest of it. Keeping that sternum kind of pressed down onto that ball. If you're hitting it here, it's bottoming out beforehand. It's feedback. Super, super simple. If you can practice, Whatever you do on a range, grass, wherever it may be, if you can get something to give you feedback, that is the 100% key. Because at the end of the day, unless there's a coach there actually watching you hit, you don't know what you're doing. Nobody does. You can feel like you're doing something completely different, but then if you actually film yourself, you'll realize that actually the changes you might make are mind you, if nothing at all. A change of a couple of inches within the body is you know, so hard to actually accomplish within the golf swing because everyone has a set pattern that they try and swing into. So having something like this, it gives you direct feedback instantly. It tells you exactly what is happening straight away. Another one to do is you get a tee peg and put it just before the ball and actually make that your point of focus to actually hit. Again, if you hit the tee peg, you'll know that the club is bottoming out after the point of impact. Simple, simple stuff like that, but it works. It takes your mind off technical thoughts as well. You're just trying to miss something. It's amazing how people avoid things much better than if you actually tell them to do something. Avoid that? Okay, great, not a problem. Bottom out of the club behind the ball? I, I don't know what you're talking about. Simple. Nice little feedback drill.
Now, these two stations. Now this one, this one is absolutely key. Again, it's a form of a feedback drum. So, Tommy Fleetwood. Anyone picture his swing? Not, not bad, is he? He's all right. He's worth a few quid. Worth a few quid. Needs a lot of conditioner, doesn't he? Now, Tommy Fleetwood's finish position is basically, as he was a kid, he used to hit loads of straight arm shots. So arms extended out, down towards the target. That's how he's got used to that position. But for a lot of golfers, what he can also do is provide a valuable tool to actually figure out what they're doing within their swing. So how many times have you hit a shot, particularly a bad shot? So you've kind of come in, topped it, whatever you've done, hit it like that, look behind you, drop the club, used a few choice words to the woodland all around. Everyone's done that, right? Everyone's done that. How do you know what you've done in your swing from that swing if you've not actually stopped to kind of take it in? Now, it can be pretty depressing if you're just hitting bad shots and you're holding your, <laughs> holding your finish position after a bad shot. I mean, people three fairways away are going to think you're a great player, but <laughs> if they watch you for about a few minutes as you walk 10 yards towards your ball, obviously you're going to get caught out. But let's say I hit a shot and I'm going to go again, middle of the fairway, but I'm going to hold my finish position. So now what happens, I'm going to hold my finish position, okay? So what went wrong with my swing there? What could I tell from where I finished here? There we go. Gold stars all there. Simple as. But how many people, again, and certainly I probably would have been the same if I'd hit that on the course, dropping my club, getting angry. But I wouldn't have gained that feedback without actually stopping to have a look. Now, as far as iron strikes go, very simple way to actually gain feedback very quickly. Taking this, I've got a seven iron here. So I'm going to try and hit this about 150. I'm going to come through. Hold my finish position. And what I'm looking for within my swing at this moment in time is I get my hands very flippy and very releasey. So sometimes finishing in this point here, sends the ball left. If I can hold my finish position and move through into here and hold it, I know that I've not released my hands and gone through. Again, super simple, but it's feedback. It's all about that feedback. Last little station. All these drills make sense so far. All things you can kind of go away, work on, and use okay this one super simple a little bit more technical though playing go across within the iron swing strike absolutely key what's the first part of the goal swing that can affect strike you got your setup you got your grip what's the first thing that can affect strike weight distribution ball position all part of the setup first part of the technique Takeaway. What is the number one cause of poor iron strikes that you find with most golfers? It's disconnection. Arms, body, moving independently, okay? A lot of golfers, again, because the ball's on the ground, because it's a very hands-dominated sport, a lot of times the first movement away, hands and arms, moving away this way, moving away that way, with a lack of body turn. As soon as the body doesn't sync up with the arms, the arms then go wand about, become disconnected, then they've got to reconnect as they come down. A lot of poor iron strikers, if they've got an okay approach into impact, which a lot of golfers do, kind of underrate yourselves a lot of the time, you guys, all about that takeaway. Super simple drill for that takeaway. Get yourself set up, ball position that we were just spoken about. Turn the chest and the club head away at the same time to halfway. There. Connect them up. Club face matching spine angle, arms have turned away with the chest and moved into this position. If golfers could start to move the club away like that, honestly, so, so many good strikes could follow. I'm kind of selling the dream a little bit here. But moving your arms away independently from your body, it happens surprisingly a large amount. It's just simply because golf's a very hands dominated sport. You want to control stuff with your hands. The body, it only joins the party quite late for a lot of people. So they need to join that party a little bit sooner, okay? So what we're gonna do, we'll grab some clubs. Lateral shot, the lateral shot. Well, basically, 
if you've got <laughs> shanks are an interesting one because they are the technical so if you if you have been shanking it it is a technical issue but it then wheedles its way into your brain a little bit that's the way it works it doesn't go the other way you hit a pipe you're like oh crikey i didn't like that maybe hit a couple more then it wheels its way in but it is a technical thing so here in a shank it basically comes from one of two ways so presenting the heel of the club by moving a long way this way so moving inside pushing the hands outwards so presenting the heel the most common way is getting that club moving in a steep fashion and then presenting the heel coming in from a steep angle of attack like this now with something like that normally normally there's a couple of things which are associated with it the first movement into the downswing is normally the hands and the arms moving out and away from the body the simplest way to actually stop getting that shank and to cure a shank is to get the arms and the hands moving a little bit more down and shallow in the downswing now a drill so if you just grab this club into here now you take it up to the top of your backswing and just pause for me into here now lovely exceptional like it there you go just do this that easy enough simple enough got this alignment stick and i'll lay it across the forearms now most people when they get up to the top of the swing unless they've done anything crazy with that right elbow with that right shoulder you should be able to get the alignment stick pretty much laid across the elbow joints here okay now to keep that club shallow if you move the hands and the arms down so and then kind of turn towards the ball a little bit. So drop in, drop in, drop in, drop in, drop in. It's only going to be moving off and only going to be falling off about this point here. See how those elbows are still pretty much level? And that club has dropped down into a little bit more of a shallow position. Now, if you move up to the top, this is something that you see with a lot of shankers. You start to move down, shoulder goes high, elbow goes low. And can you see now, shoulder, elbow higher, shaft, steeper and this is really from this point all about recovery you're either going to move this club far enough off to the left hand side not to shank it or it's going to come down steep and you're going to shank it or heal it or hit it thin it's one of those things so a great little drill he's up to that top and then trying to keep those elbows down and shallow rather than getting that up and away but it's that steep it's that steep motion into the ball which is usually the cause of that shank that motion kind of coming over but again it's one of those things to keep an eye thank you very much my glamorous assistant <laughs> so any other questions with that any other questions you want about keeping it low so how we so what were you saying before about that two eye um i've got a i've got a big under a tree okay 20 yards in front of me 30 yards in front of me um my two eye will just pitch up no matter how Okay. So this is a, it's a slight it's a slightly difficult one because as you've said, trying to get kind of steeper down onto it to keep it down doesn't always work. It doesn't always work. Now, if you want to keep it if you want to keep it low, what, what do you need to keep it low? What, what's the case? Back in the stance. What does it what happens when you put it back in the stance? Deal off. Okay. So it's a lack of loft. So that's the first key. If you've got that amount of loft in it, you put your hands forward, you're obviously going to de-loft it. Now, <laughs> that in itself will not keep the ball low because what will happen here is you'll encounter the golfer's conundrum. Okay. Ball, and this you see, something you see with pretty much kind of every amateur, certainly when they begin, the ball is on the ground. Okay. That's why golf is so hard for a start. The ball's on the ground. So what do you want to do when the ball's on the ground? To get it up in the air. Now what you'll find, and you do find this a lot for people who do hit it high, is they'll put the ball back, they'll come it down, they'll get the hands forward, they'll do all the rest of it. But as they start to move down, the brain is going at this moment like, listen, I'm, trying to get, I'm going to try and help you out here. Because that ball's on the ground, you want to get it up into the air. So what's going to happen? This. It's that sudden pivot back and then keeping that loft on it. Because when that ball's on the ground, it's not easy to trick the brain and to tell the brain that it's okay, it will stay low if I do actually keep it down. Now, an easy way, well, an easy way, 
a nice way to actually tell. Kind of similar to that Fleetwood drill where you can actually hold the finish position. But if you get yourself set up, ball position further back. Now bear in mind when that ball position is further back, path's going to come more this way, so you might have to aim a little bit more off to the left hand side. Ball position off to the back and just pay attention to where your chest is. Pay attention to where your chest is because you want your chest in front of the ball. So we spoke about that low point. So the club's going to come in, bottom out at this point. So it's getting set up, keeping that chest right in front of the ball. That's pretty much what I'm focusing on with my eyes. Hands ahead. And if I keep my chest in the same position at impact, there's not really much of a chance that I'm going to pivot back. If you can keep your chest here and then pivot back behind the ball, you know, you've got bigger worries than golf because you've just dislocated your spine. So if you can keep your chest in that position, that should then allow you to stay ahead of that ball. And even if you do add some flick, that should allow it to keep low. But just pay attention to that. That's really the key. All about swing arc and kind of bottoming it out. Okay, anything else? Not very often, no. Because the thing is with the, you'll find that most, irons are, irons are a precision club, they're not a power club. And I think a lot of people do get caught up with, first of all, the notion of how far you actually hit it. There's a big, big correlation between a lot of amateur golfers with distances that they hit. So let's say you hit your A time, I don't know, 150. A lot of people will actually hit their A time 140. But they'll get up to the pin, which is 150 away, and they'll be around the pin and say, oh, I hit it 150. It's not, it's ran on that extra distance. That's the, that's the first thing I'd say. If you are thinking about, thinking about iron distance and trying to control iron distance, get yourself to a pro to go launch monitor. Like a GC quad's usually better for pure carry distance, but Trackman Fly Scope will do as well. But get your carry numbers. Carry's king. Because once you actually know how far you fly it, then you can actually assess the shot properly. Because so many people, and they do studies on this quite a lot, so many people when they hit iron shots consistently end up short. Consistently end up short. So I'd rather play a controlled seven iron to 160 that I know is going to pitch 160 than try and hit it full to carry it kind of 170, 175 because I've no, I've not as much control when it's up in the air. Just a bit of a control freak, to be honest, mate. Just want, just want ultimate control over everything. <laughs> it doesn't always work out, like, but that's kind of what I'm thinking. And it's about consistency with the irons as well. Kind of with the driver, I'm, I'm never gonna tell anyone not to hit the driver hard, because that's fun, for a start. It's like one of the best parts of golf, like just trying to smack it as hard as you can. But drive is literally to try and hit it as far as you can. Like if you get up there and you hit it, you know, I don't know, something ridiculous, you're hitting it over 300 yards, you're not really going to be moaning if it's going kind of 310, 320, 330. That's going to be a bonus. If you're standing up there with a 7-9, you're 160 yards away, and all of a sudden you hit it 170 yards away, that is an issue because you've got water behind, bunkers behind, rough behind, all the rest of it. So actually having that control of the distance is key. Control of distance comes from strike. And how often, I'm, you know, everyone's found this, but how often have you been overshot? You've struck it amazing, and you've actually found that it's gone kind of too far. But the swing, you weren't trying to hit it that hard. Slowing the swing down, striking it well, will give you the controllable distance, rather than swinging at it really hard, and then finding yourself, oh, I'm a little bit long, I'm a little bit short, because then strike is compromised. Strike's king, because that's what you find with the top players. They obviously hit it a long way, but their dispersion, when they miss a target, is this way. It's never this way, unless they miss club. It's always side to side. Right guys, that is the Iron Clinic done. So hopefully some of the stuff you would have heard there will have helped you in your own game in that quest to actually strike that ball a little bit better with those clubs. So guys, if you are new to the channel or if you are a returning viewer, please hit that subscribe button and comment below on everything that you've seen. Also hit that like button while you're here if anything will help you out within your game. It's been a great day down here at Wentworth. So that was three hours in total of actually helping golfers with their iron game. So hopefully some of the guys down here as well have found it useful. I would certainly, certainly hope so. Remember, there are more videos coming from the Creators Cup today, so stay tuned to those on this channel, of course, on me and my golf channel, Chris Ryan Golf and Seb on Golf as well. <sighs> All done, Craig. Shall we go get a drink? Coffee. Gotta get a coffee.